Yo, what is up guys? Guido here back again with another mini bike video. And in this video, we are going to be upgrading and installing a new carburetor on my mini bike here. Now, if you guys have been sticking along and watching all the videos we've done to this, obviously it looks completely different than what it did um, the way I had it before. New wheels, new tires, new blower cover, new pole start. Went through this whole entire motor, made sure everything was tight. Um, ready to go. It has got a new head on there. Uh, everything on this bike has pretty much been touched and tightened and made sure everything was pretty much hood ride ready. Hood ride's coming up. So um, I obviously just wanted to do this just in general too to make sure this thing was, you know, copacetic and legit, um, you know, because I built this thing a long time ago. So I wanted to make sure it was all up to my standards as they are now. Um, I did a whole new cockpit on here, mirrors, grips, new throttle, everything, and this thing is pretty legit. Now, this video isn't really part of the whole, like, upgrade series that I've done on this. This bike is pretty much complete um, for everything that I wanted to do to it, um, other than just installing the light wiring harness and all that, which you guys will see at a later date. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to upgrade this carb. I'm having some issues with getting it tuned right. Um, I cannot get this thing tuned right for the life of me. I've been through so many different jets, twisting the air fuel mixture back and forth, back and forth. Same with the idle screw, trying to get this thing right. I cannot get it right for the life of me. Messing with the needle, everything. It, it Air filter on, air filter off. Nothing seems to be um, right with this. I don't know why. The spark plug is pretty black, so it's telling me it's getting quite a bit of fuel. Um, it was black before when this bike was running good, so I'm not too sure what the you know discrepancy is why it's acting differently now but regardless i would like to just upgrade to a new carburetor this is just your run-of-the-mill no brand name carburetor from go power sports so i mean who really knows who distributes that um or really what it is but it's a 22 millimeter Makuni. My dad is running a 26 millimeter Makuni. And if you wanna see the video on how to install that, go ahead and click on the top right and you can see how to go ahead and inst install that one. A little bit bigger. Um, and this one, like I said, is a 22, it's, so it's a little bit smaller. Sometimes bigger is not always better. So I'm just gonna be sticking with a 22 millimeter and I'm gonna be upgrading that no name with a Nibby Racing Carburetor. So this is still more your basic just um, you know, 22 millimeter round slide. I, I was going to go with a flat slide just for a little bit more throttle response. Um, and I'm, in my opinion, I think they're a little bit better. Um, but the price also jumps up quite a bit too. So I was like a round slide on this has been working fine. And for those that have been following this, this bike is hitting over 65 miles an hour. So clearly that's, you know, working pretty decent for me. So I decided to just stick with the same thing, but upgrade to a little bit better of a brand plus new carburetor obviously better um so this is actually really nice really nice uh box and everything this one actually just came i believe in like a bag or something i don't really remember so this is nice they send you stickers they send you a nice box um this i believe is the air filter i didn't buy an air filter so they sent this uh air filter to me so that's awesome i'm guessing it's probably a different diameter than this go power sports one is so it'll have a new filter for it so that's nice but this is super duper cool i've already kind of opened it and got into it and stuff like that and you can see the stuff they send you fuel filter i'm not going to be running that um some of them are pretty nice because you get you know fresh fuel make sure it's filtered out but um and a lot of these predator 212s they already have a fuel strainer in the gas tank which i mean it only does so much yeah but um the gas i use i know it's pretty decent i know it's pretty clean and these motors are like Hondas. They're, you know, a little bit of debris isn't going to mess them up. Um, so I'm not going to be using these. Sometimes, depending on the different brands of these, um, they'll really, really restrict fuel flow. And then you can get issues where your carburetor is not getting it, uh, any fuel. And um, you're not getting the power you want to get out of it. So then here's some gaskets, some hardware. Super cool. Some extra jets. That's awesome. I don't know any other carburetor that gives you extra jets. That's pretty cool. I also ordered some extra ones too, just in case. Um, and then here is the carburetor. And this is the carburetor out of the box. This thing is really nice. And believe it or not, this is actually uh, one of the ones that is more on the lower end tier of what you can really get out of these carburetors. I believe this one was like 44 bucks. And this is basically your just entry level carburetor like i already mentioned this one's the round slide so you can spend a little bit more and get an upgraded flat slide 
um, which there's different benefits with that better throttle response. I think it's just honestly an overall better design um, and you make a little bit more power depending on your build. Of course, it depends on your build. All these mini bike motors are different depending with what you're running. Sometimes you're going to get more power out of something bigger or different. Other times you're going to get less um, or either, you know, different configurations. You might get more torque, but you might lose some more horsepower. Um, and that also kind of applies if you're really dyno testing it, you'll see. But if you're just, you know, putting around on the street, you're not really going to, you know, notice anything. If that would equate to, you know, your top speed or your acceleration or whatnot. But um, out of the box, this is really really nice it's really hefty and i don't mean heavy i mean hefty like this is it feels like it's you know superior build quality i'm not sponsored by nibby or anything i'm just saying this out of my own opinion um from taking it out of the box but it feels really nice you can see it's got the idle adjustment on the fly right there so you can easily twist it with your hand you don't need a screwdriver which is really cool that really helps too if you live in a colder area and you want to turn your idle up just a little bit to get the bike started and then you can turn it back down and then you can see it's got the air fuel mixture screw uh, which is in front and it's on the side, which is really nice. A lot of them um, are actually on the back here below, which depending on your frame, it can be kind of annoying trying to adjust it or whatnot. Um, you know, which one is more accurate, you know, before the, the carburetor or after, it's kind of, you know, personal preference, I guess. But um, I think this is a really nicely done carburetor and yeah, awesome so then here is the jets that come with it if i had to take a wild guess i'm gonna guess jets are already installed um but anyways these are the extra jets they send you right here and then here is the air filter they give you uh by nibby um this is the one that they just included so that's super cool i'll probably end up running this one um because i'm not sure if my uni is the same diameter or not i could probably check it out but i think i might switch over to this one um but anyways, this one's super duper nice. You can see actually it's angled too. So when you mount it up on your bike, uh, it's going to be, you know, in the direct wind a little bit more. And you always want to go ahead and oil up these foam filters. Um, it is a crucial part of a foam filter, um, especially because it, it really blocks and traps out the loose dirt and debris that could possibly get sucked through. The oil actually goes and blocks it. So if you want, a lot of people I've seen just use regular motor oil. You could do that. Um, I recommend using an actual air filter uh, oil, though, just because I think it's more specific. It's it's going to work a little bit better. So um, with all that being said, we are going to get to removing this stock carburetor. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and take this filter off real quick. It just slides on off just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and loosen my throttle cable just by twisting the stock top hat off on the carb here. And then your throttle uh, cable and your slide will come on out just like that. All right, now this is kind of hard to do holding the camera, but pretty much what you're going to do, you can see how I'm holding the spring. We're going to want to pull back on the spring here and you can see the throttle cable that's behind there. You're going to want to, once you pull back on the spring, there'll be no resistance on it. And then you can see how it's in there on the right. You just let it come down a little bit after that notch there and it'll slide all the way through that cutout there. So you just got to get it over that initial lip that it's on there that's holding this on you know when you press the, the throttle it'll pull it up and stuff you got to get it off that initial lip and then it'll slide through this notch cut out here um, and then you can get this whole thing off all right let's see if i can kind of do this on camera i'm just pulling the spring back here and then i can get it out of the slide there and then just pull the throttle cable out And you can see it got out of the slide there and then this thing can just come out and then you can go ahead and just take off that slide and then take off your spring and then your top cap can slide off just like that because we'll be using the new one now i'm going to go ahead and just use vice grips on this fuel line here so i can get it so it won't leak and then i'm going to go underneath the carb over here and there's a little screw there i'm going to go ahead and loosen that up so then I can drain the remaining gas that's in this bowl out. So you can see I'm just letting the gas that's in that um, bowl there just drain out um, just so it doesn't make a mess when I go ahead to take off the carburetor, doesn't spill everywhere. Now you can go ahead and loosen your gas line. Now with the fuel line off, we can use our 10 millimeter wrench and a Allen key to remove 
the two bolts and nuts that are holding on this carburetor. All right, so you can see I have the carburetor off after the Allen bolts and those two nuts. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and just take that manifold off as well, inspect the gasket, make sure it's good and there's no leaks, um, like a manifold gasket leak or anything like that. Make sure there's none of that, and then also port match it and line it up with the new carburetor. All right, so you can see I got the manifold all off. Here is the manifold. I'm going to go ahead and line up the carburetor to this right here, making sure they get the O-ring fully seated all around. So check it out. I got the manifold all installed on the carburetor and it's kind of hard to see in there, but it is 100% port matched and the O-ring gasket is 100% all around. So it should be super duper sealed and I shouldn't have any air leaks um, from this part here. Now time to go ahead and get a new um, intake manifold gasket and clean up the surface area there where it's going to mock up to and tighten it all down. All right, check it out. So I got the gasket on there now. I had to kind of wallow this side out a little bit because I think what happened is this gasket seems to be just a little bit too small for this intake manifold. So it was kind of like wrinkling or bundling up in the middle. And I'm thinking once it kind of like got, you know, squished down on the manifold, maybe it made like a little bit of a crease or something or some sort of lip for fuel and air to escape. And I had a uh, you know, a manifold leak. So I wallowed it out so I shouldn't have any problem like that. Plus it's a brand new uh, manifold gasket. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and get this reinstalled, tightened and snugged up. All right, and check it out. We got our carburetor all nice and installed, all nice and tight, ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this top hat here so I can install my throttle cable. And you can see it's the same deal as the other one. You got your spring and then your top hat and then your slide, which will come out just like that with your needle on it. So as far as the needle adjustment, I'm not gonna adjust anything. I'm just gonna put this on the bike and see if it'll run. Um, there is a little rubber uh, or plastic washer there I'll have to take out. So then I can go ahead and thread in my throttle cable and put my spring back on. All right, so you can see I got my top hat installed on my throttle cable here. The throttle cable is ran through and hooked on to where it's supposed to go there. And then I have my little plastic washer back in place. Now you can just slide your slide back in place you can see the tapered side there that's lifted up goes on the outside so you can see the slides all the way installed so I can go ahead and tighten my top hat back on and now with the throttle cable installed make sure you twist it and you make sure it works the way it should be and it's not like stuck in the open position or something like that now we can go ahead and install our gas fuel line here so just take off the little cover off of the little stem there and then we can just slide our fuel line back on over. All right, and with that, everything's all installed. My gas line's installed, my throttle cable's installed. It's ready to go. Something I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit later is install my air filter and oil it up. I just wanna make sure the bike runs and see if it runs at least, we'll put it that way. Um, and it's just easy to have it off just so I can switch stuff around and touch stuff if I need to. So other than that, I'm gonna see if it runs. All right, and then here too, for the just the excess drains here, they just kind of have a turn down. And then also they have a long pipe they include for the bottom one. I have some spare fuel line le left over. This is some junky fuel line. This stuff absolutely sucks. Um, but it'll do just fine for um, the drains and stuff like that. And then I can have them zip tied together. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with a little bit of editing magic. And boom, check it out. I just have them routed just straight down. I think that's a nice little touch and it gets them out of the way. So with all that being said, let's see if this thing runs. And check this thing out. She starts right up and she sounds great. It's tuned perfectly and this thing sounds perfect. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you guys comment, like, and subscribe, and stay tuned for the new videos that are coming out. You don't want to miss them. Peace.